welcome to Catechrist Magazine. We can be found on the web at www.catechrist.com. My name is Jason J. Rock Houston, and it's my honor and pleasure to be speaking with um, Doyle Van Frankenstein, um, the guitarist uh, and founding member from Doyle. How are you doing today, Doyle? It's actually Doyle Van Halen. It's Doyle Van Frankenstein. Oh, excuse me. Thank you for correcting me. I, I apologize. Um, now, I'd like to tell you... Tell you um, I've, I've always been a fan of bands like Kiss and Alice Cooper that, you know, had a visual thing going. And um, I, I know that had a lot to do with um, a, a previous band. But um, when, you, when you decided to form a Doyle band, um, was there any thought of you not, like, getting dressed up in costume? Because I, I think it's, um, it's a great thing, you know, um, to kind of have that visual thing to go with the music. Uh, no, I just do what I've always been doing. Yeah. And, and, do, you, yeah, and, and do you feel like... Um, like, like when you get up um, in the makeup and stuff and you get ready to go on stage, I mean, um, um, you feel like you're getting into the war paint and kind of like, um, you know, Clark Kent becoming Superman. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah it, it, it's kind of cool. And, and um, I got to say, the music, um, uh, um, I've been listening to Doyle 2, which is, I guess, the latest album. You guys um, have been on tour to support that. Um, and, and the music just kind of really rocks. Um, and um, I know you're still supporting that, but um, have you guys given any thought to the next album, or is it all about um, the current tour right now? Uh, on the pandemic, I've, I've written 25 musical yeah. compositions that I have to download and thank you to the singer, Alex Story, and uh, he finishes them. Oh, wow, wow. And, and yeah. So how's the tour been going so far? Because um, I know you guys got a great opening act with um, Salem's Child, and... Um, so people are getting two great bands. Uh, it's been going good. Uh, you know, it's, it's real weird to be out again. And uh, we're getting the bugs out, man. And, you know, pretty rusty. And, and, and um, tonight tonight you guys are playing the whiskey, uh, correct? Yes. And, and that, that um, to me, that's quite a comeback in a lot of ways because, you know, you mentioned the pandemic. And, uh, I mean, a lot of bands have not been able to get out there and do these live shows. So... What's it like to be out there um, touring again? Uh, it's a little strange, you know, to be around people, you know, you're kind of leery to engage with them and, you know, yeah. we, uh, and we bring certain people on our bus, you know, that nobody comes backstage, so it's kind of being segregated. There's no meet and greets, which is great for me because I do the math show, and uh -huh. I'd rather not do the math show. You know, okay. like, yeah. Know, yeah, and you know, um, I bring up the whiskey too because it's a legendary um, place here in LA where I'm from. And um, I don't know if you, you're even aware, Doyle, but um, places like the whiskey came very close to um, closing down because of the pandemic. I mean, uh, there was talk with um, some of these clubs because they weren't doing any business for like almost two years that they came very close to closing down some of these places. Yeah. Well, well, thank God, thank God that didn't happen. But um, you know, it's just because of bands like um, you guys, it, um, people are coming out again, and so I, I think this is um, really a, a great time for um, you know rock and roll to be coming back. Yeah. And um, now I understand um, your publicist was sharing with me that um, you've got um, you've got a protein um, powder. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah. And uh, so we tried a few different flavors and we came across one and uh, made the 
label. So it's all ready. We're just waiting on uh, probably COVID. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and and have you is uh, is your business at all been affected by you know like all this supply stuff? Well, yeah, I started a, a music company as well. It's called Bunt Frankenstein Music Gear. Oh, okay. And uh, our string line is coming out first, and we've been waiting on paper for like two years, for like a, at least shit a year. They keep telling us, oh, we can't print it. You know, the, the printing place is, is what's holding us up. Wow. And string, strings, you're talking about guitar strings, right? Yeah, guitar strings, I have a signature artist as well. Oh, cool. Yeah. And, and I hear you, that um, you're going to have your own pickup, so that that's pretty cool for a guitar player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to come up with uh, as many useful items for the Von Frankenstein Music Gear uh, company. And uh, I'm not going to put out any dog shit. I don't put out carpets. That's why it took me so long to make that protein. Yeah, it's all about it's all about the quality. And um, as far as the protein powder and that, um, do you have a website where people can go and check that out if they want to um, purchase it or get yeah, more information? It's uh, veganmonster.com. Oh, okay. Uh, or you can get it right off right off my uh, Instagram. You can just click on the link in the uh, bio. Yeah, and um, you know, I, um, technology being what it is, you know, a lot of people get their um, music these days digitally. But um, I was curious, like, if somebody wanted to. Um, like get the latest um, CD. Can they get physical copies, or, or is it just available digitally? No, we sell those physical cop copies on officialdoyle.com. Oh, okay. okay. That, um, that that's pretty cool. As far as um, vinyl is. Go ahead. Vinyl as well. Yeah, vinyl's pretty cool. And, and the cool thing about vinyl, if you're a musician, I'm from what I understand is um, you know people you know you're able to charge like thirty five dollars, twenty five dollars, depending on what it is, and and the band actually kind of gets kind of cuts even which is pretty cool because for, for a lot for many years um people haven't been buying cds but i'm an old school guy i like to i like to hold something in my hand look at the artwork you know yeah yeah like i have so much music in my phone i don't know the names of the guys in the band i don't know the names of the songs i'm listening to but i, I don't even look to see what they are anymore it's yeah i mean so um i i miss the days of going to a record store i used to spend like hours in tower records and just you know planning what i was going to buy next and um, you know, I, I still get stuff off, you know, um, Amazon. That's where I get stuff most of the time these days. But um, but p kids today, I think, are really missing that experience. Yeah, that, that was cool. I remember like, listening to Kiss Alive as a kid and just looking at the pictures over and over and being like, I want to be this. This is what I want to do. Yeah. And, and, and how big of an influence were bands like Kiss and Alice Cooper on you growing up? Oh, Alice Cooper, uh, you know, Kiss in, in the music department does Oh yeah. Close, you know, I mean, their music isn't as good as a lot of people's, but they're, you know, they brought the fire and the bombs and the hoopla to music, and uh, you know. Yeah, I, I mean, Kiss you know, was. I like, yeah. I like about twenty Kiss songs, you know. Yeah. Other than that, I don't like any of them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Kiss <laughs> was. Yeah, Kiss was actually actually more, more visual. I mean, I'm a little more of a bigger Kiss fan than that, but but Alice, even Kiss admits that Alice Cooper came first and was was kind of their inspiration. I mean. Um, uh, even Paul Stanley said, you know, um, all four guys went to see Alice Cooper and they thought, okay, well, we're going to do that. But instead of one guy getting dressed up, we're going to have four guys in the band get dressed up. And, and to them, that was kind of, um, you know, their inspiration. But Alice yeah. Cooper, even today, he's putting out new music. The guy is almost, you know, he's close to like 75 or 80 years old and he's still doing it. Just as good as his classic yeah. stuff. Yeah. Well, have, you ever, great, have you ever met Alice? You know, my girlfriend did a video with Alice Cooper and Kate Roberts, and she said, do you want to go? I'm like, I'm like, I could go. She's like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, oh, oh my God, fuck yeah, I'm going to go. That's so I went, and I get I get there, and Alice is like, hey, Doyle, how you doing? And I'm just like, now my mind is blown for the rest of my life. I listened to this guy religiously as a little kid. Yeah. And then, you know, when I get to, like, meet him, he knows who I am. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, um, and I think, you know, part, part of why people know who you are is not just from your previous band, but even the Doyle band. And I think what's kind of cool about a guy like you, Doyle, is um, you, you're, you've got that one name recognition that anybody that's followed you will know um, when they hear Doyle, they'll know who, who we're talking about, you know? Yeah, I'm like Madonna. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it just, or Cher, you know, you, you get it in one name. And... Um, yeah, Cher, that's even better. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and um, how how much are you you've been enjoying like being in um, Los Angeles right now? I mean, because um, 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 I love it out here. Yeah, I love it. I love it out here. I live on the East Coast. Yeah. In Montreal, and I live in New Jersey, and it's fucking brutal, man. It's forty below. The wind is like cutting you in half. Yeah, the, the weather know, here is. It, 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 digging the car, you dig your car out just to move it. It's like, yeah, what the fucking fuck is going on here? Yeah, the weather here is beautiful. And then you know, it, it's crazy at times because as beautiful as the weather is, like it, it's been, we've been having a heat wave all week, and then, and then they, they say it's going to re- start raining like you know tomorrow and into Monday and Tuesday, but. Hey, I, I um I wouldn't trade living out here for anything. <laughs> and um, so, do you guys got anything special for the show tonight? Any surprises for the fans? Uh, we're gonna do uh, songs we didn't do yesterday because we played there yesterday. Okay, that that's cool. I I, I dig when I dig when people like do that. You know, you kind of change up the set list because obviously, you know, um, it keeps it fresh for people coming to you know, in case somebody's coming two nights in a row, but also. As a guy's playing the the music, I'd imagine you know, kind of gets boring doing the same set, you know, every night. So that keeps it fresh a little, I would imagine. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I was curious, how old were you when you first um, picked up the guitar and started playing? Um, uh, well, my brother had uh, he got an acoustic guitar when we were really small, and I remember when he got it, I was like really sad for some reason. You yeah. Know? yeah, yeah. But, uh, That, that's pretty amazing because you know uh, again I in prepping for an interview today I was um I was listening to the um download your publicist sent me of the, of the uh, latest album and, and just um it, it all pretty rocks it's heavy it's aggressive um and I think your combination of your guitar playing and and, and your vocalist I mean they just really kind of mesh together um I, I, I think oh, it's, it's perfect match yeah perfect I, match And so when you guys like are writing stuff, like, um, do you live in the same area, like in the same room when you're writing the stuff or like do you send them stuff and like you said, you just kind of still uh, have? No, I just, I just record uh, the bass, the guitar and the drums and I arrange it all. I send it to him with a, a list of each part so when he's listening to it and the music changes, he doesn't have to figure out what's what. You know, this is what I'm picturing and then I just tell him to do whatever you want because if he hears something differently, yeah. you know. Yeah. Oh, wow. So um, I was curious. As far as you know, your guitar heroes. Um, who, who would some of those guys be that influenced you growing up? Oh my God, there's billions. It's, it will go on for days. Yeah, um, but, but just you know, Charles Cooper, Jimmy, Jimmy Page, Joe Perry. You know, oh, yeah. Eddie Van Halen. I mean, uh, H, 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 you know, everybody. I mean, Nick Rons. I can go on for fucking an hour and tell you everybody I like. Yeah, I mean, and p- people will be surprised, like. Um, I brought up Kiss a couple times. They t- talking about Ace Frehley. You know, as a guitar player, he doesn't really get the credit I feel that he he deserves. Like, like you might uh, take a Kiss song like Parasite. People think of that as um, like a Gene Simmons song, but but Ace actually wrote the tune back back in the day. You know, he didn't feel comfortable singing lead, so he typically would give his songs to either like um, Gene or Peter. And it, it's kind of interesting. Um, he, he wrote stuff like Strange Ways that. Um, you really don't think of an Ace, as an Ace Frehley tune, but if you check out the writing credits, it is, you know, very much an Ace tune. Well, not only that, his solos are so unique, nobody sounds like that. Yeah. It's so sleepy, it's so, it's so, I don't know, it's great. It's just the way he bends that string, nobody bends the string like him. Yeah, and I, I like his last couple um, solo albums, and, you know, even even the, um, he, he's released like two cover CDs, but I, I think even that stuff is it, it's it's magical because I think it takes a certain type of player. First of all, not only to um, release um, you know wonderful beautiful, beautiful uh, music of your own that you create and write, but to be able to cover um, other people's stuff that takes a certain talent. And Ace seems to have it. I mean, even going back to um, all the way to 1979 on uh, Dynasty, 
I mean, Ace sings a great cover of the Rolling Stones' 2000 Man. I mean, so, I mean, that guy's multi-talented, I think. Yeah. I was jamming with like the guys from Anthrax and Slipknot. I thought it was great, and, and my girl, she's got. A, I'm tone deaf, you know. I can't figure a song out. She's like, right, but she's got perfect pitch, so she's like, something's out of tune here. I'm like, what are you talking about? It sounds perfect. So uh, he supposedly had a bad show, and uh, he was walking. He's trying to get out, and he's like sliding against the wall, trying to sneak out. And I'm like, fuck, I'm gonna be that guy. I can't believe it. I, I stopped him. I'm like. Yeah, and, and I'd imagine, you know, well, it, yeah, I mean, and I, I, th I thanked him for all the sleazy solos, and, and he, you know, the picture could, tells everything, he's just got like a, fuck this face on, you know, <laughs> I felt so bad, but I had to do it, because my singer loves Kiss, you know, and I'm like, I, I, I gotta do it, I yeah, well, gotta do it. What, what I love about a guy like Ace, too, not only has he been around all these years, but I mean, he's getting up there in age, and he's still, um, he can still um, get up on stage and do his thing and 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 rock the audience, his world, you know. And, and it's 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 amazing. And, and he really doesn't care. I mean, there's a certain element to um, being a performer and you know being a rock and roller. I mean, that's rock and roll. I mean, it's not necessarily when you get up there on stage that you want it to even um, play the song like it is on the on the um, record. You know, um, if you want to listen to the record, stay home. But if you want to see like a great live show, that's what I tell. I say the same thing. If you want to listen to it, play it perfect. Stay home and listen to it. If you want to see us go crazy, come on down and watch I mean, it. I mean, like, um, that's why Deep Purple with, um, with Blackmore was one of my favorite bands back in the day because um, it's one thing to listen to Purple on record, but, uh, I mean, they used to jam out if you'd see the band live, like, um, to one song for 30 minutes. I mean, that's a rock show. That shit was loud. That's one of the only concerts I was like, I think I'm going to leave. This is too loud. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, hey, there you go. And John Lord to me, um, I mean, uh, people say keyboards suck, but I mean, uh, the way that guy rocks. Uh, only his. His is the only one I'll accept out of all the keyboards. Yeah, yeah. The keyboards, they can, don't put that in metal. But there, it sounds like a fucking brutal guitar. Yeah, because, you know, he, he ran that Hammond organ through the, through his amp or whatever he did, but um, it, it was magical. And I, I think reason, um, like you say... You accept it from a guy like him. He, he was the originator of that. Everybody else that kind of followed him, you know, came after him. Yeah. Yeah, and, and so I, I'd imagine too, Doyle, um, part of, you know, like talking about some of these performers getting up there in age, I mean, um, um, that's part of the reason uh, it's so important for you to probably that you're into your fitness and everything, huh? Uh, I just always did it, you know. I just, my dad was always jogging and working out. Yeah, yeah, and, and of course I know your character is based on um, Frankenstein. So I got to ask, um, um, how big of a horror fan are you? As far as like, were you ever a big fan of those old kind of um, Universal movies? Because I, I couldn't believe um, like oh, Fr Frankenstein, the original, going back to 1931. I mean that that film just turned like 90 years old recently. You know, people people don't even realize. I mean, if you if you're a fan of that old monsters TV show, I mean, it really is based off. I mean, Herman Munster is supposed to be Count Dracula's son-in-law. You know, married his daughter. But I, I love you know the way they use the comedy in that TV show. But um, I, I'm with you. All those old classic Universal monster movies, they were the best. I mean, we're talking about Frankenstein, Dracula. We're talking about um, Creature of the Black Lagoon and stuff like that. And um, I think all these modern day horrors um, don't even compare to, to what came before. Uh, it all turned into slasher films, which is boring because that's something that's real. You know, uh, show me something, give me uh, Let's use our imagination and be horrified by some creature. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and like, um, I, I have a show I do like on, um, you know, movies and stuff, and we did one on the 90th anniversary of um, 
Frankenstein. And what I was very interested to learn is um, if you go back to like the original Frankenstein or Dracula, back in the day, they used to have the credits of like, you can watch these old horror movies and you see the credits used to run before the film rather than after. And it's, it's just, um, it's just, it's just amazing. So, um, so how, um, where do you guys go next? Like how much longer does the tour go till? Uh, April 10th. April 10th. Okay. Um, yeah, and, and and as far as um the the um guitar pedal will be coming out or pickup rather, um, do you have any idea when that's um uh, is there a target? We're waiting on, on fucking pole pieces, man. Wow, We're wow. Pole pieces, that's all. Man, and that's so, so um, I, I'm assuming you were very involved with the design, so like um, you're going to be able to kind of have your own patent for this, right? Which is a cool thing. Yeah, it's going to be called the Von Frankenstein Monster. That's the name of it. And um, and I was curious. I imagine you're going to have a website and stuff set up for this. But um, will will like um, people if they want to purchase this? Um, will this stuff be available like in um, music stores and that? Yeah, as well? we're going to have our own, we're, set, we're setting up the social media. It'll probably be in uh, Guitar Center. Seen the string line, and they want it. And it'll be uh, we can try and get it in Sweetwater. We're going to be in Target. Yeah. It's going to be somewhere else. Sure. Okay, and and, and um. And, um, um, well, I'd like to thank you once again, Doyle, for taking time to do this. I really enjoyed talking to you. Like I said, um, I have another show. Um, sometimes we talk about horror films, so maybe one day we could um, talk specifically about your love for um, horror films. But um, I really enjoyed talking to you today, and um, we'll po be posting an interview about a week. I'll be sure to let your um, publicist, Tom, know when this goes up. If you're happy with the way the interview went today, let's please keep in touch, and I'd love to do it again. Take care, buddy. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. Chaotic Drift Magazine.